Uh, this is going to be a quick follow-up video to my other video on the um, Circuits at Home or SparkFun USB Host Shield. Uh, and that is because I get uh, a couple questions a lot. I get emailed or uh, comments are left in the comment section of my YouTube videos. And those questions are about debugging information, dongles, and running multiple shields. So I'm going to go over those things in that order. Um, so the most common question I get is, or really uh, error that people send me, is that they are not getting the same information in their terminal that I get in my video that I show. And that is because they are using the newer version of the library, which I do suggest because I assume that it's more stable and it has more features including uh, working with the new PS4 controllers. Uh, but the difference is that the debug is not on by default. So that means when you start up the code, you will see PS, uh, PS3 Bluetooth library started that, that line at the top, at least for the Bluetooth library code. Uh, but you will not see any of the information like the HCI reset or the um, address information. And that's because de debug is turned off. And the reason they did this is the new library is a little bit bigger than the old one. So it barely fits in the memory space on the Arduino Uno. So if debugging is enabled, the library, at least the example code, will not fit on an Uno. And that's not a problem if you have a uh, Mega, which has plenty of space. But if you do have an Uno, you will either need to leave debugging off or remove some of the functions um, from the example code to get that to fit on your board. Uh, one of the things that can easily be removed and generally drops the space uh, a significant amount is there's a little bit of code near the bottom of the example that returns the pitch and roll of the controller. And often that's kind of useless information. People generally just want buttons and joysticks. So if that code is removed from the example code, it... Uh, gets to be about 2,500 kilobytes, I believe. Uh, so that easily fits on the Arduino. So uh, about the debug, it is a setting in, or a line of code in the settings.h tab. So that would be in the Bluetooth library folder, and it's one of the .h files, and it's the one called settings. So if we go over here, it's settings.h, and it's one of the first lines. It's right there. So there's the top. There it is. So by default, this will be Enable USB uh, UHS debugging will be set equal to zero. So in place of one, there'll be zero, and that will mean no debug information. To modify that, you just uh, replace the zero with a one. You will have to save this, uh, shut down your Arduino IDE, then restart it, and it will reload the libraries. And you should next time you run the code, you should see the same or very similar debug information to what I showed in my previous video. However, it's not going to fit on an UNO without some modification, at least the example code that everyone usually tries to run first. So just note that you will need to remove some code elsewhere in order to fit this on your board after enable de uh, enabling debugging. So that's about all I have on debugging. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about, and I get questions all the time, is dongles. People have trouble with these a lot, and so do I. Uh, I actually only have one that works. I've gone through several, and uh, some don't work, some were broken when I got them, and some worked but had what appeared to be an extremely low da uh, data transfer rate, so that uh, all the information lagged quite a bit from the controller to the window. So I, I can't really give um, a lot of helpful advice there because I myself had difficulty finding one. This shape seems to be the most common that will work, and I believe the what you're supposed to be looking for in these dongles is version 2.0 of something, I don't understand, uh, and VDR. Actually, let me check that. I believe it said it's VDR. Yes, it is VDR. That is something that should... Oh, sorry, EDR, not VDR. I'm not sure what this means. I don't really know much about Bluetooth. There is a very helpful page on this board and a lot of settings and modifications that I will have uh, a link to in the bottom of the description or in the description below the video but it doesn't really go over dongles too much it goes over everything else I'm gonna talk about in this video but not dongles and I can't seem to find any decent information about these anywhere so it seems like if you're gonna work with this you're kinda on your own and you're gonna need to buy a lot of them to get them to work but the two links I have on my uh, the, the post related to this, this board 
should work. That's where I got them. But it seems like the batches are always different. I, I really don't understand. So I, I talked about this in my first video, but people have been asking me questions. And the only thing I uh, have new to offer is that uh, at Fry's Electronics, I was there the other night, I noticed they sell these. This one I got two of them for about $3 from China, and it just happened to work. But Fry's Electronics sells one package that looks like this. I don't know what the internals are, but it's rather expensive. $10 is expensive for these. Um, and it says explicitly the uh, data rate and the EDR and the version 2.0. So that might be a good bet if you're uh, willing to spend $10 instead of 2 So if you're near Fry's, I would uh, like... If anyone uses it and it does work, please let me know, and I will uh, add a, a comment or something about that to my website. But I just this one works fine, so I haven't actually tried anymore. So that's about it for dongles. There's, there's really, uh, I really annoys me because I I can't seem to figure out why some work and some don't. But uh, on to the last topic, and that is running multiple shields. A lot of people want to use this on a robot or a car or something like that and they want to run either a motor controller shield or a servo shield. Uh, those are the most common emails I get. Um, and that's usually fine, but on the Arduino, uh, a lot of the motor shields end up using these uh, pins over here. You know, about 7 through 13 around there. Um, depends on what shield you get. And the problem is, is that the USB host shield uses pins uh, 9 and 10, I believe. Let's see. Yes. 9 and 10. Let me get some autofocus on, off here. So this, this pin that says SS and uh, INT, those go through these little uh, pads here, which you can cut and then resolder if you want to uh, reroute the pin. Uh, so save select goes to 10 and int goes to 9. Now this is usually fine but if you're going to use another shield that needs these pins these can actually be rerouted um, in the code and you'll, you'll have to make a small hardware modification. And there's a, uh, a page all about this but I'll go over it briefly uh, just to help some people out as quickly as possible. So. If you're trying to run another shield, you will have to check what pin it, pins it requires, and if it also runs on SPI, things could get difficult, um, depending on what, how its library works, uh, because you can run multiple SPI devices. There are actually a couple uh, pages on that on the Circuits at Home website where they go through it, but there are some hardware modifications, and you do sort of have to know how the other shield's code is working. So uh, I'm not quite sure how to do that, but if you're running a motor shield or servo shield that does not use SPI but needs these pins, there's, there's actually a very easy fix. So there are a couple things that can be done. First, you are going to have to uh, cut these traces in between these silver pads. Uh, and what that does is sever this pin from uh, the host chip. Or, alternatively, if you want a temporary modification, you can bend the two pins out of the way and insert it into your board so that these pins are not connected. So that's a more temporary modification if you'd rather not you know, go cutting through your board. But if you do decide to cut the trace here, it can easily be soldered uh, and repaired with these, using these pads. After the hardware modification is made, you will need to reroute your pin, the pin designation in the code, and that's done in the USB core.h file in the uh, USB host shield library. And uh, there is a page on this, but I'll go over really quickly, at least for the more standard Arduino boards. So here is the USB core.h, and it's right here. Right down here, this is where the SS pin and the int pin are defined. Now the top couple of lines are for special boards like the Teensies, uh, the Mega 80K, the Balladuino, and I'm not sure what the Black Widow is. But the last line here is the official Arduino board, so that's the one that most people have. Uh, and what what it's saying is the first. Here, let me grab a pen. The first number here is for the slave select pin, so this P10. You can change the, the the digits here to whatever pin you would like to put the slave select on, and the P9, which is uh, whatever pin you'd like to have the int pin on. 
Now, there are a couple considerations. You need to make sure that pin isn't being used by something else. Uh, and also, I have a quick diagram of the Arduinos up here. One thing that's important to note is that on the Arduino Uno, the standard pin for slave select is 10. That's right here. Uh, 9 is defined versus int pin. It, it's uh, not default here because I don't know what that function is generally for. Uh, but one thing you do need to note is that the ICSP header, which is how the this board actually gets the uh, MISO MOSI in the clock lines for SPI interface. Those are the same pins here as over here. So I'm not sure what happens if you try to run a, another shield on these pins. I think that because these are those uh, the SPI pins by default, that most other shields are not going to use pins 11 through 13. However, they do sometimes use 10, and that's where the problem comes in. So if your shield does use these, I, I, on an Uno, there's nothing you can do. On a Mega, there is, because these pins actually don't go to pins uh, 11 through 13. I'll show you that in a second. Um, but generally, the questions I've received is that the other shield they're trying to mount on top or below this needs 10. And that is the problem pin. And that one can be easily rerouted, as I've set, shown with the... Uh, on the hardware and in the code, do any way you'd like on your Uno. Uh, there's one other thing. Here's a pinout for the Mega. Uh, is the slave select pin would would be defined up here in the code, which you can change. But you'll notice that pins 11 through 13 are not multiplexed to the ICSP header, wherever that is. They don't have a picture of it. Here it is. Yeah, they're not multiplexed to that, which means that if you do have another shield that runs on these pins, you're not going to run into an issue. Um, the ICSP header shares pins with, I believe it's it's 50 through 53, yes, down here. Here's uh, MISO, SEK, SS, and MOSI. So, if you change uh, the piece of code here to 53, that will be in line with the default SS pin on the Mega, which is actually what I did when I was um, testing this. Uh, and I think you can reroute the int pin wherever you'd like as long as it doesn't uh, conflict with a the use of another pin. So that's about it. Uh, I will have a link to the page that I think is useful for learning at least about the hardware a bit more. Um, and then that's pretty much all you need for the software, but if you have one of the other boards, like the ones I mentioned, the, the Black Widow, the TNC, the Mega 80K, or the Balladuino, those pins are different, so make sure to check the, the USB core.h and change the pins appropriately. So, uh, as always, feel free to... Uh, this will be linked to the my post on my website about this, um, and we'll also have the link to the website, uh, the instructions, but I'll always feel free to leave a comment or go over to my website where you can send me an email or leave a comment there. Uh, so I hope that helps. Uh, I, I welcome any uh, information that people find about these because uh, people are always asking and I still haven't found a good solution. So that's about it.